four. It is time for member statements. The member from Bruce Gray, Owen Sound. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mental illness affects people of all ages, cultures, and educational and income levels. Each year, one in five Canadians experience a mental health or addiction problem. That is a troubling statistic, Mr. Speaker, and far too often Canadians face mental health problems in silence. That's why I'm proud to share with you today the work that Bruce Power and its partners in mental and personal health are doing to help generate conversations during Mental Health Awareness Week. Yesterday, Bruce Power launched its second annual Break the Silence campaign on social media with the goal of raising money to help support local mental health initiatives. The event was an overwhelming success, with nearly 20,000 shares on Facebook and tweets sent with the Break the Silence hashtag. While Bruce Power's commitment was $1 per tweet or share, they've decided to donate $84,000 to local mental health initiatives in Bruce, Huron and Gray counties. This money will go towards helping residents of these counties when they need it most. I know a number of members in the legislature participated in yesterday's campaign, including my caucus colleagues Lisa Thompson and Lisa McLeod. This is the second year Bruce Power has held this awareness campaign. Last year, Bruce Power donated $80,000 to local mental health initiatives. As part of the campaign, please visit BreakTheSilenceBGH.com, which provides an overview of other initiatives that Bruce Power has worked on to combat stigmas around mental health, as well as a list of local and regional resources for people who need help. While the 2017 Break the Silence campaign is over, I'd like to encourage my colleagues in the legislature, regardless of your party line, to join the conversation and spread the message. Mental illness is something that we should never keep silent about, and thank you again to Bruce Power for all of your support of our communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Stennis, the member from Ken Kenora Rainy River. Thank you, Speaker. May is Lyme Disease Awareness Month, and unfortunately, yet another year has passed and nothing has been done by this government to effectively tackle the issue. When Lyme is not treated early or is left untreated, it is an unspeakably awful disease that wreaks havoc on every system of the human body, eventually resulting in paralysis and death. Recently, I asked this government what steps it was taking to develop a comprehensive strategy to combat Lyme disease in Ontario in light of a bombshell 10-year tick host study that was released, which cited that there are eight species of Lyme-carrying ticks in the Kenora area. Kenora is already known to have the highest infection prevalence ever reported in Canada. Despite this damning new information and despite the fact that Lyme disease is spreading, we're anticipating that about 10,000 Canadians will be infected by the year 2020, this government has done nothing other than create a Lyme disease awareness plan. An awareness plan does a disservice to the families in the Kenora area who are worried about contracting Lyme, and it is a slap in the face to many people across Ontario who are suffering with this debilitating disease and who are forced to personally incur thousands of dollars of expensive treatments in the United States. It has been nearly two and a half years since this House passed my colleague from Algoma Manitoulin's motion, calling for a concrete and robust strategy to combat Lyme disease. When will this government stop stalling and throw a lifeline to Lyme's many victims, present and future? Thank you. Further member statements? The member from Ottawa, Vanier. Today, I would like to speak to you about uh, saint jardin an important community hub for the Francophone community of Ottawa, and it exists on a national and international level. This entity was founded by four theatre companies, Vox Théâtre, Théâtre Trillium, Théâtre de la Vieille 17, and Théâtre de la Catapulte. It's own genre of production proposing a wide range of experiences to both seasoned theatre goers and to children and those who are just getting acquainted with the arts. These are founding companies are providing access to francophone culture across the country to those who are far away from large urban centers. Companies perform on a regular basis, but they also do cultural mediation, especially with children and youth. And this includes workshops and opportunities for the public to discover and to deal with their cultural differences. La Nouvelle Scène, Gilles Desjardins, présente Desjardins provides uh, various forms of art, uh, dance, visual arts, and others which captivate the public. Today to congratulate them 
on their brand new infrastructure inaugurated last September, and that they have developed to become a frontline player in the Francophone culture in Ottawa and beyond. It's also a great place that they open up for the community, real, really helping us reach out to broader audiences to support the arts and the Francophone culture in the region, in Ottawa and beyond. Merci. Un gros merci. 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 Further member statements, the member for Whitby, Oshawa. Thank you, uh, Speaker. It's a privilege to uh, rise today and honour fallen Ontario Provincial Police Officer Lauren Turan, who at 1 p.m. this afternoon, Speaker, had the Highway 401 East and Stevenson Road Interchange Bridge in Oshawa dedicated in his name to honour his 22 years of service to the province of Ontario. He served at detachments in North Bay and Still River before he left General Duty Speaker and worked in more specialized branches of the Ontario Provincial Police. In 1981, Detective Sergeant Ferran received a position which he had sought for many years when he was promoted to Detective Inspector. Speaker, throughout his career, several Crown attorneys commented on Lauren's excellent inve investigative abilities and dedication to his job. Sadly, Speaker, on May 4, 1982, while returning home from work on a case, Lauren's vehicle went off the road. He was rushed to hospital, but his injuries were too great, and sadly, Speaker, an exceptional police officer died. Speaker, today I would like to acknowledge the dedication and public service of Detective Inspector Lauren Ferran, and indeed, Speaker, all of our police officers who keep us safe each and every day. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Further member statements, the member from Hamilton East, Stony Creek. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, Ontario universities inspire and expand the minds of our young people, helping them realize their potentials. They support cutting-edge research and innovation that spur social and economic progress. They strengthen our democracy and support our communities. The university faculty are at the heart of these institutions. We must ensure that they are supported and treated fairly. Ontarians, Ontarians know this. 94% of Ontarians believe our universities should provide good jobs. Recently, I met with representatives of the Ontario Confederation of University Faculty Associations. I was concerned to hear about the challenges faced by Ontario University professors who, by a wide margin, face the highest student-faculty ratios in Canada. Yet, instead of investing in more full-time faculty, our universities are shifting teaching to precariously employed contract instructors. These contract faculty often have no benefits or job security. Some have to reapply every year for their jobs. They are usually paid less than their full-time colleagues. Do these types of precarious jobs represent the Ontario we want for our children? No, they don't. That is why it is vital for our universities to have the funding they need to invest in full-time, tenure-stream faculty. And Ontario needs labour laws that ensure fair employment, not just for contract professors, but for all contract workers. This is how we support good jobs and secure the quality of Ontario post-secondary education. Thank you. For the member statements, the member from Trinity Spadina. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, good afternoon. Um, Trinity Spadina is home to some of the fastest growing neighbourhoods in Canada. As these gr communities grow, we need to ensure that all Ontarians have access to childcare, schools, health care, and other crucial services. I am confident that this government recognizes it is taking action to meet the needs of our downtown community. Community like Liberty Village. Liberty Village was historically a manufacturing centre of Western Toronto. Today, it's home to many millennials who want to live close to work. This brings a need for sufficient social infrastructure, like school and daycare uh, facilities, so residents can start and grow their family. The 2017 budget provides hope to that. The province will invest nearly $16 billion in capital grants over the next 10 years. The funding intends to help to build new schools in high-growth areas and improve conditions of existing schools. I also welcome our government's commitment of 100,000 new daycare spaces in Toronto, or some of those, many of those will be in Toronto. Mm -hmm. This is part of a historic investment of over $200 million um, for, for Ontarians. I believe these investments will provide relief to neighbourhoods like Liberty Village and help to transform it into a true live and work community. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. The member statements. The member from Niagara West Glanbrook. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For decades, parents and older generations have lamented that younger generations don't have enough financial literacy to thrive in our fast-paced society. 
That is no longer the case. Today's youth and millennials pay more attention to budgets and financial planning than most short-sighted governments that are willing to spend money they don't have in order to win votes. Younger generations are more financially literate than ever before, but that doesn't mean they're going to be able to thrive. It is hard to get ahead when their personal share of the provincial debt stands at more than 22,000 per person. They are also burdened with an additional 34,000 in national debt, certain to reach even more astronomical heights since the federal government is not projected to deliver a balanced budget until 2050. At this rate, it isn't just children and grandchildren who will be paying for profligate spending. The great, great great-grandchildren of millennials will be saddled with repayment. Shameful. A national nonpartisan organization called Generation Screwed is promoting the truth that younger generations will pay the price tomorrow for the fiscal irresponsibility of today. They show that young people across the province and nation recognize the burden that is being put on them. They're waking up, they're waking up to this and the other, other and other governments' reckless fiscal decisions. The Premier is fond of referencing the impact of this government's decisions on her grandchildren. I wonder if she'll tell them that the impact includes debt increases of $33 million a day. Our current government should take a lesson from financial literacy of our youth before the youth of today Thank suffer you. the hangover from this government's Thank party. Further members' statements? Further members' statements? The member from Thorn Hill. Thank you very much, mes chers amis. Thank you very much. The PAGE program allows grade 7 and 8 students who have good grades to have the opportunity to spend time at Queen's Park in a program where they can meet parliamentarians as well as politicians while learning all about the legislature, the history of our province, and about the parliamentary system. The students are excused from their normal school attendance while being page, being pages, and they receive $15 a day. They're also given uh, money for their transportation, and their, the time they spend here varies on, from cir on circumstances, usually between two and four weeks. Being a page is a great honor, and it's a very competitive program. Pages from outside of the city generally live with family members or friends in the Toronto area. Those who are accepted into the program will be invited to eat breakfast with the member from their riding. You can find more information online about this program and you can even apply to this unique program. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Et le président. They have lunch with me too. <laughs> the uh, member from Windsor Tecumseh on a point of order. On a point of order. Thank you, Speaker. With your indulgence, I used, I'd like to welcome a special guest to the legislature this afternoon, the mayor of Windsor, Drew Dilkins. Welcome to Queen's Park. <laughs> I, I'm not sure who that guy is that he's sitting next to. Right? <laughs> That's illegal. Thank you for all the members' statements. It's